Hi everybody, it's Mr. Alex and Susie Lee. Today, we wanted to help you guys out. We heard you were working on a math project and making some posters. So we're here to talk to you about using Canva effectively. Susie, over to you. So today we're gonna to start talking about how to navigate Canva and CARP. And lastly, how to design with Canva. So first of all, we're gonna talk about how to create text in different styles. So if you look at this left menu bar, this fifth button says text. So you can create a text using different font combinations. For instance, you can click on this and you can select this first line and change the font and font size as well as um, bolding and italicizing, etc. And if you want to go to, if you want to create different shapes, you can click on elements and type in whatever you want to make. So you can type in box and it will show different squares and rectangles that you can use. In circles, you can also select out of a lot of different examples, as well as arrows. And if you wanna insert a particular image, you can go to photos and type in anything you wanna find. So if you wanna find an image of a cat, there's a lot of different options you can choose from, and you can even create a graph. Um, you have to go back to elements for graphs. You can select whatever graph you wanna create and then put in data to create, to make it specific to your data. And lastly, if you wanna save your work, you can go to download at the top and then select a file type that you wanna download in such as PNG, JPEG and PDF. You can even download a GIF. So for example, if we wanna download in PNG and also you can select pages and also you can download the whole file. So for instance, if you download page one It'll save your design to your downloads file. Yeah, that's it for navigating Canva. All right, and if I could just add one more thing, when you're also hitting download, there's an option to increase the quality. So if you could do that one more time for me, Susie, you see size, let's try uh, moving that slider to the right and it will say something like three yeah, keep going, two, and then three. So this is like the maximum quality. You can see that the pixels down below say 4,243 by 6,000, so it's huge. And that way, if you wanted to print this on a large piece of paper, you could easily do so. One other final side note, we're working on an A3 piece of paper. Just in case you and your um, class are going to print these out, you might want to work on an A3 size piece of paper because our photocopiers are A4 and A3. But if you were to increase the quality, the way that Susie and I were just showing you, you'd be able to print it on something larger if you chose to do so. So it's very flexible. All right, let's move on to CARP. So CARP is something that we teach in design and CARP is um, an acronym. Um, Susie, could you go to the top right-hand corner where it has the circles? And it says C-A-R-P, yeah, right up there. Thank you. So C-A-R-P is a fish. Carp is just like a fish that you know you can find out in the wild. But this is an acronym that helps us to remember some design principles. So C is for contrast. Now contrast can be in color. You probably know, okay, if I have uh, a white background, I should probably use black text. 
contrast. But contrast can also be in many other ways. So here you can see with all of these squares that you can have contrasting size. The top row is large squares, the middle row are medium size, and the bottom is small. So you can have contrasting size. You can also have contrasting shapes. Let's go down a little bit further. So we have squares and a triangle and circles. Those really help us to see that there are different things on the page by just using simple shapes. Okay, let's go down to the next part, A, alignment. This is one of the biggest tools that all graphic designers use. Things get aligned to an invisible grid. So you can see here that there's like a left alignment for our squares. Everything seems to be lined up to that very nicely. And when we have alignment, things feel clean and organized. Tip, please avoid paragraphs written in center or middle aligned text. It's very hard to read. All right, let's go to R. R stands for repetition. Now, if we could just zoom out just a little bit, this will be a little bit more obvious. You might notice on this slide, repetition, we have circles. There are circles everywhere. Carp in our navigation. We have large circles throughout the slide. And even a little icon with the carp is another circle. So by repeating something, there seems to be cohesion. Another thing that we're repeating are the colors. Notice how yellow, gray, and well, I would say black and white also are repeated throughout all of these slides. So they feel cohesive. They feel connected with very simple colors. So repetition, we repeat something. All right, let's go to the last one. P is for proximity. A really good example of proximity is a word. When we write, we write a series of letters together in English and in Korean, and then we put a space after it to show that that word is done. So proximity is the idea of grouping something together to show that there is a connection. Here you can see that there are squares that are grouped together in the left. So there's some sort of group. Then you can see that there are triangles grouped together on the right. So that shows that there are groups. By proximity, by putting a space between them, we're able to then understand that there is a connection between those things that are grouped together. So proximity is a great tool to use. All right, so the last thing I'd like to show you is called visual hierarchy. So I just wanted to pause there. Did it work? It said, you will read this first, and then you will read this, then this one, then up in the corner, and you will read this one at the end. Did it work? For me, yes. The reason why is they used all the CARP principles. So contrast, the biggest thing, the blackest and whitest area, that square in the middle has the greatest contrast, the greatest size. So we read it first. Alignment, it is aligned to the center of the overall page. So it also makes us read it first. I wouldn't say there's much repetition here, but proximity, we can see that those two lines are clearly grouped together as part of the same sentence. So by using things like CARP, we're able to control where people look. That control is called visual hierarchy. So the things that have the greatest contrast or center alignment make us look there first. Things that are smaller and lower contrast, we would probably read later. So when you're designing your posters for math, think about three things. Where should people look first, second, third? Use CARP to control where people look. If you have more than three things, you might consider adding an additional page. All right, Susie, back over to you. Talk to us a little bit about bringing it all together. 
Okay, so this might be a funny meme for some of you guys that says graphic design is my passion. So going back to what we just saw in terms of visual hierarchy and CARP, we can see that this meme doesn't really follow those guidelines. So if we look at this, it says graphic design is my passion, but the font is Comic Sans, which is a little cheesy and it's not taken very seriously. It's used in a lot of comics um, that, or memes even like this. And there's an image of a cat with a white background. We usually use um, PNGs or um, cut the white background out so it blends well with the rest of the background. But this image is not only, um, again, cheesy, but it's also irrelevant to what we're conveying in this um, graphic. So why use an image of a cat when we're talking about graphic design? And also the background is a little distracting because it, the colors don't really blend well with the text. So some parts of the text you can very, read very easily because the contrast is very high. But if you look at these purple and blue areas, it's not very contrasted because black and blue are both dark colors. So it's not very easy to read and it's not, um, it doesn't convey the message very well. So if we look at the next page, this is talking about the same um, content, but it's designed very differently. So we use, first of all, we use a different font um, we use a serif font for the title that we want to um, attract the eyes of the viewer first. And it's also centered and it's at the top with a very big um, font size. And then we use a sans serif font for is my passion because we want people to look at design first and then is my passion. So that's a good, another way to contrast these different lines of um, text. And then in the middle, we have a nice image. Um, it's like a bookshelf, but it doesn't have a white background. It blends very well with the um, blue background in behind. And the colors are also very satisfying because it's all grouped together, but it doesn't um, distract viewers from reading the text because it doesn't cover up the letters. Great, and could I jump in there as well? So let me just add a few more points. Susie, everything you said was right on point, but in addition to it, the idea of the title with a serif, that's, look at the N. Uh, do you see how the N has that little foot down at the bottom, that straight flat line? So that's called a serif. And serif fonts tend to look like things like a newspaper. They tend to be more formal. So in this case, when design is written with a formal font, it tells us that we mean design as a subject. We mean formal design. We mean the, the discipline of design. So we, we mean design as something serious. Then, <clears throat> excuse me, down below, it says, is my passion. That's where it shifted to be more personal. And by using a sans serif, a rounder font without those feet, we can see that it has a more personal, softer tone to it. I also want to add on the idea of repetition. So we've talked about CARP, contrast alignment repetition, proximity. So that R with repetition, notice the image in the middle has the exact same size for those books, I believe they're books. Um, and they're, they're repeated, that shape just keeps getting repeated. So there's that satisfying feeling about them when we look at it. So you'll find, like Susie was saying, when you're using um, CARP and visual hierarchy, your poster will feel more satisfying to your reader or to your audience. They will want to read it, they will engage in it. And most importantly, they will walk away with whatever message you want to share. If you chose not to follow some of these principles, 
you might end up making something that makes your viewer feel frustrated. It's not as enjoyable to look at and I want to move on quickly. But the point of visual communication is that we engage the reader. So please use CARP and visual hierarchy and avoid those memes like design is my passion. All right. And the final little point that I also want to bring up as a bonus is that we're going to send a color palette to your teachers. So along with this video, your teachers could post a color palette on Google Classroom and share them out. Susie, could we do a quick preview of our Chadwick color palette? So maybe highlight some text and then we could see um, our colors that we have available. Yeah, sure. So we'll go back to this first slide. And if we highlight this, it shows Chadwick colors, the left menu. Yeah. And you can see that we have that Chadwick famous navy blue, as well as other colors that complement it very nicely. This is kind of like art class where you learn about complementary or analogous colors. So we will send these over to you. And all you need to do to add it is highlight the text and then click that little plus button up in the corner. And when you click that, do you see where it says um, pound or hashtag 0000? Yeah, so that's just black. So we're going to give you all those codes. And Susie, could you type 00254A? That's the Chadwick Navy Blue. So we'll give you all those codes, and then you're easily going to be able to create a beautiful poster that has colors that just work together. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Feel free to email me or Susie. We'd be happy to help you out with any questions. All right. Well, take care. See you soon. See you guys.